Hi, my name is Ailani and I am a former public and private school teacher, gone homeschool mom, and today in this video, per request from you, I'm going to give you 16 plus activities that you can do with your young learner with these lovely things called Unifix cubes, uh, counting cubes, math counting blocks, math links, you know, these things right here. Now the first activity I wanna share with you is just simply sorting by colors. So you could say them, say pink, pink, orange, pink, 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 right? And eventually what you're gonna do is have the two groups sorted out one at a time. When you're done, you can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you want, you can also put them in nice little rows if you want to, to try and show some order before you count them. But you can do this however you want. Now these are equal. And so you could also, if you want to, have greater than, less than, and equal cards and put them in between. You could also, when you're sorting, have the word written above them so they know which pile to go through. Now, of course, sorting is great with two colors. If they get good at that, then you want to add a third color and sort with the third color and so on and so forth. Another activity that you can do is patterns. So you can start with two patterns and then say, you know, I've got pink, orange, pink, orange. What color comes next? and you can lay them out and have them choose. This is also really good with their fine motor skills and their pushing and their pulling. You know, of course, do it easy. Then you can do something a little bit more difficult where they have to match the pattern. What comes next? Orange, great job. And then of course, adding a third color to the mix is always the next challenging one. The next activity you can do is have them sort by numbers. One, two, three, let's start with just four. Keep it nice and easy. Of course, this one you wanna prep in advance. So this one would have one, two, three, four. We would put it in the four pile. This has one, it would go over here. This has two, so forth and so on. Of course, to make it more difficult for them, you wanna go one through 10. Now you can use a whiteboard, but you could also make these with little index cards laid across the table. Now another thing you can do, which is along the same kind of idea, is them putting individual blocks with the numbers. So for example, this is one. This is two, so I'm gonna go one, two. This is three, so I'm gonna go one, two, and three. And then this is four, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. And that way they're counting it all out, labeling it with the numbers. You can go as high as you wanna go, as low as you wanna go, do it at their own pace. Now another thing you can do is look at tallest to shortest. And so they, you could put them all in you know, whatever order you want, just lay them out and say tallest to shortest. Which one is the shortest? Well, this one is. And then which comes next? What's next? And next. Of course, you can go on as high as you want to, but what's the shortest one? This one, it's one block. What's the tallest? This one, it's four blocks. One, two, three, Four. So as you may notice, these come with different, a lot of them do, come with different shapes inside the actual block. Now this one has five sides, this one has six sides, this one is a triangle with three sides, and this one's a square. Down here is open, the top is a circle, and so you can start to create patterns with those. So if you want all the squares, so you can do all the squares, or you can come up with a pattern where it's square, 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 and I don't know, let's just do the triangle right there. Square, 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 triangle. What comes next? Square. And so this is for a little more advanced kins, but it's also good for beginners as well to start recognizing those little shapes. And then what you can also do is you can say, well, how many squares do we have in this shape? One, two, three, four, five. 
it should be a square, six, and then you can say I have one triangle, and then you can say, okay, six plus one equals seven, because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can do stuff like that with these as well. Now this one is fun is because you can actually create a little grid on your own with these numbers. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to fit on there. And have the kids themselves, you give them the shapes, and then you say match. They can match them up. You can count when you match them up. And you can make it as interesting or easy, as hard, however you want to do it to meet them at their level. They can actually, if you want, you can actually have them go ahead and try to trace the blocks. But you may get some pin on it. That's why we love dry erase markers, because it wipes right off. But there you go. You can also have them build different shapes, right, to trace. You could take the number four, for example, right? And you can say, okay, well, I'm going to design my own shape with the four blocks. No matter what shape it's in, it's still four blocks. And then when you get the shape, you can help them trace the shape, right? I'm really bad at this, but you get the idea. And here you have, that is a horrible one, but hey, you know what? You get the idea for, ta-da. The area doesn't change, but the shape does. That's, you start teaching area by using these. Another thing that you can do is take a grid of four. Now you could do this, at, this is easy with the four, right? A four will fit in there, but also, so will two twos fit in there. You can also take three, three fitted in there with a one. And of course you can always do one of each. You can count them, one, two, three, four. Know that they're four, one plus one plus one plus one. You can even, with a whiteboard, because I love these things, write out one plus one plus one plus one equals four, right there. And you can do that for each one of them. I know I kind of mentioned this before, but you can take a higher number for, so for example, you have eight in this, and you can experiment with different ways that you can make these blocks fit. Of course, it's really good for those fine motor skills and developing those muscles in their fingers, but it also teaches them area and counting and manipulation, just lots of different things, manipulating numbers. So they can play with this forever. And if they get, cause these kids get like super creative, they can start creating different things with these. Like you would be surprised. You'd be like, I didn't even think about that, right? You got those naturally born engineers that just love to create different shapes and, and name it, right? They'll give it a name. So let them play with this and find out different ways that you can create different shapes. And if they get really creative, you can even have fun and do like, okay, I'm going to use these eight gray ones. And then I'm going to give you, you know, five pink, two, orange and one red create something with this and so they'll play around and next thing you know you got like a, a cat right these kids are creative have fun with that and utilize that to help teach them math now i know we did a little bit of addition before but something to remember when you are doing addition with them that you use two different colors so here you've got four blocks that are pink and two that are orange you want to say four plus two equals, and then we'll count them all. Now here's something really fun you can do. If you want to start teaching color mixing, you can take two primary colors and have it equal what they, they are. So we all know that yellow plus blue equals, you know what it equals. So let's go ahead and do the math problem here. So we've got one, two, three. We're gonna write three or have them write three or pick the number. Maybe you have, you know, up at the top, you wanna say, okay, is this a two? Is this a three? Is this a four? And they may circle the three. And then you're like, great, let's make this a three. So what is the sign? We wanna add it. To how many is that? One. They write that down. And what does this actually equal? Okay, let's count this all together. 
One, two, three, four, great. But blue and yellow make green. So now they're together. Let's write it out as four. So that one not only teaches color mixing, but counting and addition. So totally have fun with that. Now the same is true with subtraction. It's, a, it's kind of hard to kind of, you know, do the color coding thing. So what I like to do is say, hey, I have a total of how many here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there's seven. How many yellow ones are there? One, two, three. There's three, so I'm gonna take away those three. How many do I have left? Oh, well, I have one, two, three, four left, okay? Well, that's one way to write this subtraction problem, so let's try it again. Seven, okay, how many green? Okay, so we're gonna take away those four and then I'm gonna have three left. Now, of course, subtraction is much more difficult, so you wanna make sure you practice addition a lot because that addition needs to be very strong and it, it's a foundation for math. So get that down first, and then when they have that down, go ahead and do this. Now, to help get that down, of course, using the whiteboard is definitely one of my favorite things, but you can also use cards with numbers on them and have them pick through the cards. You can also use worksheets, too, for some of those older kids. And so what I mean by with cards is you will have all these cards laid out for them. Maybe you wanna do less cards. Maybe you just wanna focus on these right here, right? So you have a four, and you're gonna add one, all right? Well, okay, let's find the cards. We've got a four, and then we've got a one. What are these going to equal out to be? Five. Of course, you probably definitely want to have an equal sign of some kind and a plus sign of another, just to kind of help teach them those different signs. Another thing that you can do is with the board, do matching. Now, you could do this as cards too, but I really like to have my kids write. Okay, so you could put this down and have the student take their pen and just draw a line to it. So that's also helping them with some fine motor writing skills. That's just another simple thing that you can do as you're working with the number blocks. There is also the idea of greater than and less than. So you can have them either write it out or you can have cards to put that in. And of course, another fun idea that you can do with these number blocks is measurement. And you can find anything that you have laying around the house. I mean, maybe not scissors is perfect for preschoolers, but this will kind of give you an idea. You wanna measure them out with the blocks, like so, to figure out how long it is. Of course, you can always use the same color, but in this case, this one really doesn't matter. So that looks like the scissors are approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units, right? And you can also compare the units when you're done. Let's say there was something that was two units, obviously. This one is taller or greater than, and it is one, two, three, four, five, five more units bigger. And you can also do this on a worksheet, writing everything out. It's just a fun little way to teach subtraction and measurement together. So what you wanna do with this one is, let's say you have a die, right? You roll the die and you get the number one. So you put one block down. The next person, you, usually the parent or sibling, rolls the dice and they get two. So then you're gonna put one, two down. So, so on and so forth. You roll the different numbers, you know, three, maybe they get one, you keep going until the whole thing is full and whoever is the one that fills it up is the winner of the game. So this is just a really fun game that you can do with your kids or siblings doing it together. You can do as many players as you want, make the grid as, as large as you want, completely up to you. So let me know down in the comment section below if there's anything that I forgot to add that you can do with these Unifix cubes with our young learners. I will go ahead and put some links in the description box on where to find them. And uh, share this video. Like this video if it worked for you. Share it with your friends. You know, all the things. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm going to go ahead and put some videos over here, including one on sensory toys. That might interest you. So until then, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.